Hey people, Dr. Kit, the Bay Bay Bet here. And this week on Ask Me Anything, um, I'm gonna talk to you about pollination networks. So I was chatting with the Curtin Media team about a recent publication of mine called Spatial and Temporal Scale of Analysis Altered Conclusions About the Effects of Urbanization on Plant Pollinated Networks. And I published this with Professor Jeff Ollerton, who is like the world's leading expert in pollination. So I'm very honored to have published a paper with him. Anyway, so they were like, what are pollination networks? You know, we need to start off with knowing what these are. And sometimes, you know, when you work in a field, of your expertise you forget that there's jargony words and you know when you first started working in the field you didn't know what those meant either and now they're just sort of part of your common lexicon but most people don't know what you're talking about so what are pollination networks so what they are they basically represent the interactions between flowers flowering plants and their visitors and I analysed just the bee visitors, but you can analyse all visitors. I've got another paper coming out soon where I analysed all visitors, so stay tuned. Um, but I analysed the different bee taxa, and taxa means the different bee groups in terms of their, I'm trying to not use jargony words, evolutionary groups. So we have um, say the genus Megachili, that's one taxa, and I had the genus Amygilla, and within that genus there's different species, and so I analysed what genera were visiting the different plant species. And you can represent these insect visitor plant interactions in a network approach. So you have nodes which are the plants or the bees the plants are at the bottom the bees are at the top and they're connected by their interactions and you represent this graphically and so check out my paper for those graphical representations and it can show you how connected all the species are whether there's particular modules how nested the network is and you do the statistical analysis so nestedness means when say you've got a plant and it's very specialized. It can only be pollinated by one group of bees, but that group of bees, they don't just pollinate that plant. They will go and visit many other plants and vice versa. You've got a specialized bee and it will only visit one plant genus. That plant genus tends to be visited by many other bee groups. And this is a very stable evolution strategy because if it was just a one-on-one -on -one mutual relationship, um, if the bee went extinct, the plant would also go extinct. So the more nested a pollination network is, the more robust it is to extinction. And you can analyze other properties like the overall generalism or specialization of all the interacting partners in the network. Um, how robust it is to extinction. So if you removed one point, would there be cascading extinction throughout the network or would it be fairly stable? Um, so you can do so much more than just looking at, say, a single plant or a single bee species or a single bee group. You're looking at the whole community level, creating a, a network and analyzing its structural properties to see how healthy it is. And what I did was I looked at these pollination networks between residential gardens and bushland remnants. And the bushland remnants were healthier. And I also looked at the impact of honeybees on pollination networks. And I found that honeybees could actually destabilize these pollination networks. So th that was in two other papers that I published with Jeff. So if you want to read those, check them out. But this particular paper, what we did was we were like, in ecology, scale matters. In life, scale matters. Um, you know, they say size doesn't matter, but it does. Not necessarily, big isn't always better, but size does impact many things, like how much energy you expend or how, like, how you can sit 
in an airplane seat without having your legs too cramped. Anyway, scale, that is spatial and temporal scale. Um, and so what I did was I analyzed in my papers the pollination networks at the scale of a site that I was surveying. And then I averaged across each survey. But some people, what they do is say they wanna look at a pollination network in bushland remnants. I surveyed seven. What they would do is rather than average them, they would lump them all together. And rather than averaging each survey over different months, they would create a single pollination network across months. But I don't believe this is a very good practice because some bees and some plants are only blooming in one particular month or one particular site. So if you lump them together at a coarser spatial or temporal scale, then you're creating what are called forbidden links. Like the bees and the plants would never have a chance to interact, but when you do this, it's as if they would. So what I did was with my data, I did this lumping together and I wanted to see if it would alter my conclusions about bushland remnants versus residential gardens and honeybees. And it did, it altered the values, um, except for a couple of properties, generalism wasn't too affected, but many of the other, other properties were. And what's also very important is the impact of honeybees on the pollination networks at the coarser spatial and temporal scales. When I found that there were impacts at the site scale, these tended to disappear when you lump them together. So if I had um, analyzed at coarser spatial and temporal scales, I would have found that, oh, honeybees aren't impacting the pollination networks when in the local scale, the scale that interactions actually happen in space and time, um, yeah, I did find that honeybees did have an impact. So you can check out those two other papers about pollination networks, impacts of honeybees on them, and difference in residential gardens and bushland remnants, but also check out this paper about how the scale of analysis of your plant pollination networks influences the conclusions. So people, I hope you learnt a lot about what plant pollination networks were and what you can do with them. They're really cool because as I said, you can look at things from a whole um, ecosystem perspective and the interactions between different species. And you can look at bipartite, these what they call bipartite networks, not just with bees and plants, but like fungi and plants or um, plants and their seed dispersers. So they're a really cool um, ecological way of analyzing things if done properly. All right, so if you have any questions about bees or about ecology in general, um, send me a DM on my Instagram at bebebet underscore performer. That's B-E-E -E dot B-A-B-E-T-T-E -T -T underscore performer. And subscribe to my YouTube. If you like this cute little amygdala on my t-shirt, this is actually one that I designed for the UWA Zoology Club. Oh, I don't know if you can see. Also, you can tell I didn't iron it. Sorry. Um, yes, I'm not good at the uh, adulting life skills. But yeah, UWA, UWA Zoology Club. Uh, they might have a few left. If they don't, this design is also on my Bee Bay Bet Red Bubble store. So you can get it there. Till next time, people.